This is our universe. This is part of what we know of the universe, our solar system. The solar system is composed of the eight planets and a big star, our sun, our only source of light and heat. Our eight planets were formed of what was left over after the birth of the, su of the sun. Amazingly, these eight huge massive planets grew out of tiny parts of dust orbiting the sun. They continued to revolve because of the sun's gravity that locked them into orbit. Solar planets are divided into two distinct regions. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars make up the inner solar system, while Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune make up the outer solar system. Starting 1930 until 2006, Pluto, now classified as a dwarf planet, was still thought to be one of the eight orbiting planets, but was then excluded because it failed to meet the scientists' three definitions of what a planet is. For centuries, scientists have dispute, disputed on one of the most grand questions. How did the universe begin? One of the most arguable questions known to human. Did it appear out of nothing, or is there a reasonable explanation? This is when man knew the, the theory of Big Bang. According to the standard Big, Mo Big Bang model, the universe was born during a period of inflation that began about 13.7 billion years ago. Like a rapidly expanding balloon, it swelled from a size smaller than an electron to nearly its current size within a tiny fraction of a second. After this, the universe was permeated only by energy. Some of this energy thickened into particles, which then assembled into light atoms like hydrogen and helium. These atoms joined first into galaxies and then stars. This powerful model explained many questions that were raised whenever a scientist looked up at the sky. The eight planets, the neighboring stars, and the huge galaxies. This is our home, planet Earth. This is where everything starts. Earth is the third planet from the sun. It is the fifth largest of the eight planets in the solar system, and the largest of the terrestrial planets, non-gas planets, in the solar system in terms of diameter, mass, and density. Earth is also known as the blue planet because of its 70% water composition. Earth is believed to be 4.5 billion years old while life appeared on Earth within a billion years, orbiting its axis once every 24 hours while revolving around the sun once every 365 days. As we know it, Earth is the only planet that supports life. Between 199 to 251 million years ago, Earth lived through the Triassic period in which the seven continents of the Earth were interconnected. This whole land was known as Pangaea. Said to have lasted almost 35 million years, the Triassic period is the first period of the Mesozoic era. The Triassic follows the Permian and is followed by the Jurassic era. Both the start and the end of the Triassic are marked by major extinction events. At the end of the Triassic period, Pangaea slowly split up into what we call now our seven continents. Like every living organism in its early stages, the primitive man was far from complicated. A primitive man's only needs were food and shelter while fulfilling his basic instincts. He slowly began to learn new techniques and skills that he learned and later advanced. That's when he knew that he's the most intelligent, therefore powerful, of all creatures surrounding him. The primitive man used to try so that he can observe. Slowly, he began to construct a stream of ideas and connect them together to, to develop basic theories about life on Earth. Later, our planet Earth witnessed intellectual thinkers who shaped our perception, not just Earth, but of the whole universe. Aristotle, the Greek thinker who was born three centuries before Christ, changed how people perceived the universe by raising questions about how the Earth formed and functioned. Next came Galileo in the 16th century. He was fought by the church leaders and therefore by people for not accepting the church's beliefs. Through his invention, the telescope, he was able to prove his hypothesis that the universe was not geocentric, but in fact as just another planet that revolved around the sun. That's why he's considered the father of science, because he put down the roots of thoughts about the several phenomena as he did with the free-falling objects when he stated that the weight does not affect the free-falling speed, but in fact the air resistance. In 1643, another life-changing scientist was born, Sir Isaac Newton. 
Newton picked up what was left before him and continued to prove his own hypothesis. Now that the world knew that Earth revolved around a huge star accompanying eight other planets, he wanted to describe how they actually revolved. Newton did not stop there. He put down the universal gravitational laws and all the basic laws of physics and calculus. He contributed to the world not only by discovering major scientific theories, but also by leading the thinkers to a whole questionable world, to an era where people start to see the world as they never saw it before. That was the root for almost all the contributions to physics and math that took place recently. Aristotle, Galileo, al khwarizmi Newton, Ibn al haytham Einstein, and many other scientists who shaped our world took the same path. They began by questioning the universe which led them to observe and construct hypotheses. They tested, falsified, and finally structured strong-based theories. If we were to mention everyone who left an idea for questioning, it would take years. In the end, a man is born, lives, and fortunately or unfortunately, comes to the end where he has to go to his other life. And that's the fact for all the creatures, but it's not the fact for ideas. People create or raise ideas, but when they die, their ideas live long after them. And then another man is born to give pulse to this idea, to develop it, and to leave it for one another. Today, after all the developments that man has made, after all the contributions of science, we've reached an era where the thought has no limits. Imagine yourself if you were living in the 15th century. Could you have ever thought that someday people will be able to communicate with each other thousands of kilometers and continents away? 300 years, who could have thought that people would be able to go from the Arabian Gulf to Venice of Italy in less than six hours? Some theories about the future, perhaps, may indicate a prosperous image of how the future will look like. Technology has reached levels that are not easily imaginable. Some future inventions can easily be predicted or planned to take the world to another phase of life, such as the nanobots, which are robots that are fantastically small that can replace a neuron or follow the blood cells and help them in fighting viruses. There's also a new trend of cloth that is invisible and can make any object it covers invisible as well. It's the future, where everything is expected to be diagnosable. Despite that, other theories show that the world is about to end. Could 2012 really be the end of the world? On the contrary, some predict that it would be a very long process, and we are just in the middle of the process. Earth can still support life for another 1.4 million years. There are theories and hypotheses that predict that man, as he built the world, will destroy it and end it in a complete massive destructive period, while there are others that claim that the Earth and the universe were self-destruct due to natural causes, maybe even due to extraterrestrial invasion. Although these theories are built upon strong critical thinking, no one is sure of the future, not through religious views, psychism, or a certain scientific method that could tell exactly how it'll end. What we do know is, man has always been the core of the universe. And while man is mortal, man's idea will continue to live as long as humanity can last. 